Are you kidding me? Look where mortgage rates are. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve came out and they did not increase rates, but they said that what they're going to do is they're probably going to cut. I won't say probably. They actually came out and said they're going to cut. They expect to cut three times in 2024, meaning they're going to push down rates. So what's that going to do for mortgage rates in 2024 and beyond? That's what we're going to talk about today. So my name is Dan Free. I do this report on a daily basis to keep you guys informed. What the heck's going on with real estate? We focus in on mortgage rates because home affordability, let me explain it two ways. Home affordability is based on what? Home prices and the rate of interest you can get if you need to finance uh, the loan. So I really don't know what's going to go on with home prices. Nobody does. Because if you see some areas like the poster child of people saying, well, the market's going to crash, they use Austin, Texas. Well, that's the worst market in the whole country right now. So if you use that, yeah, the, the market's down 10%. However, if you use like Connecticut, for example, it's up 11 or 12% this year. So I predicted the market was going to be completely flat. I was wrong because the overall market in 2023 was up 5%. Okay, now the next piece is what I want to focus in on is more mortgage rates. If you look over there, mortgage rates just within two months ago was at 8%. Where are they now? 6.8. I predicted, well, I said that rates, I expect that rates would be in 2023 about five and a half to 6%. And I'll explain why. And my, my, my prediction or my forecast for 2024 is basically the same. And I'm working on that. I'll come out with that next week. But let me explain what happened to mortgage rates yesterday. Let me, let me give you my, basically I'll say my forecast or my pre-forecast, what I expect in 2024. And I'm going to show you how and why I do this and where I'm getting my data. So without further ado, let's get over to it. Right here, what we see is the top six mortgage programs that people use when they're buying their first house. Okay. These aren't my rates. These aren't any particular bank's rates. This is a survey done by Mortgage News Daily. And if you scroll up to the top right there, then they do a fantastic job at this. They, mortgage, they survey mortgage lenders all over the country, asking them if you had a first time home buyer buying a single family home with a 740 credit score, putting down 20%, what would the rate be? Well, there it is. If you want to find out what you rate you qualify for, or if you're locked in and you want to see how you can get out of it and maybe get into much these much lower rates, I'll give you my information at the end of this video so you can reach out to us and we can help you with that. So without further ado, let's get over to it. I want to explain to you guys why or what my predictions are in 2024 and the whys behind it. Okay, so the first thing is we want to really focus in on is how mortgage rates, how are they actually created? Who, who comes up with them? Does the Federal Reserve? No, they actually the bond market does. Wall Street does. Okay, so what normally happens is we follow the 10-year treasury. Okay, if you follow the 10-year treasury, people have been following that all for forever. And it's what the government publishes out. What they, when they don't have enough money to fund the government, they have to issue treasury bonds. And when they do that, we follow the 10-year treasury. Okay, the normal spread between the 10-year treasury bond and mortgage bonds, and I'll, I'll explain all this here in a little bit more in depth, is usually about 150 or 150 basis points. We call it 1.5%. Okay, so let me let me break this down for you. If you go back in time, you're seeing through here. Let's see through here. The yield on the 10-year treasury is, uh, we go through here, right here. Let's say 3.36, okay? Normally, if you add 1.5 to that, that's about where mortgage rates should be. So if you look at this, it's gonna be 4.88. Okay, so it's, a, it's, it's right in line with that, 1.5. It was right on the button, pretty much. You go down, you go a couple years later. Again, we got 2.24, you add 1.5 to that, that's uh, 3.75. So it's, a, it's pretty close there. You go further in time and we got, again, 2.88. We add 1.5 to that. It gives you 4.3. So you get it. We're, we're, we're pretty much there. Here's the disconnect that we've had over the last, I'm going to say in 2023. If you go over here, look at the disconnect. We had a, a yield at 4.6, the rate at 7.6, a spread of 3%. Three, we call it 300 basis points. That's normally not history. If you go back all the way back from 2010 to 2020, the spread's about 150 basis points or 1.5%. These are how I get from predictions. So over history, there's been 1.5% difference, okay? So short term, we've seen that at 3%. So once that pulls back, where should rates be? Well, what we do on this is we go over to here. What is the 10-year treasury? Right now it's 3.96. We Let's say it's 4%. You add 1.5% to that, it gives you a rate on the fixed rates of 30-year mortgages, 5.5%. 
That's how I come up with this because that's what history tells us and that's what basically economics tells us. So that's where I get my prediction of uh, the five and a half percent. Okay, so I just want you guys to understand, I'm not just pulling that out of thin air. This is what historical data is and this is the economics behind everything. Okay, so that's that part of it. The next thing we want to see is what economic news is coming in right now because that also affects yields, mortgage rates, and everything else. So we look at this data right here, and this, thank goodness we got this data today because if it came out previously, the numbers are starting to show things are a little bit hot again. And let me explain to you. Federal Reserve came in and they said, we're not going to do anything with rates because we see inflation coming back in track on, on our target, what we're looking for on our target. Okay. And that is they want the employment numbers or the unemployment numbers to go up. They want less people working and they also um, want to keep basically inflation in check. Okay. So that that's that. So we look at retail sales for that. And the data that we have coming in today is retail sales, a little bit hotter than expected. Last reading, it was up 0.1. They actually thought that was going to come down. Economists thought that was going to decrease by 0.1. So a negative 0.1, it actually increased to 0.2. So it doubled where we were last time. You might not think 0.1 to 0.2 is a big deal, but with economics and with the federal government and the Federal Reserve, it is a big deal. Okay, so the next thing is right here, again, they want the Fed, the Fed wants more and more people not working because they're like, if they're not working, they don't have the money to keep buying stuff, pushing up prices. Okay, well, the previous reading, there was 221,000 people uh, that got let go or they filed first time unemployment claims. They thought it was basically going to stay stagnant at 220, came in at 202. So less than they thought. But again, we are in a holiday season. Some of this, some of these numbers might be a little skewed because we had a lot of people on strike that are now back working. And you have a lot of holiday workers, you know, that were brought on just for the holidays. So we're going to monitor this more through January and February to see how that goes. But then you see retail sales. And again, it's a holiday season. So let's take that into perspective. The last reading was negative 0.2. They thought it was uptick a little bit to negative 0.1. It actually came in at 0.3. So that means more and more people are spending money. Okay. So that's not great news when it comes to the Fed. But what's really caused the inflation? So we need to take a deep dive into that because we just went over, you know, how mortgage rates are calculated, how I'm doing those predictions. Now, how, here's another area that we're focusing in on. Why are prices going up so much? Well, if you so in here, Here's what's bringing down inflation has been difficult, according to Jerome Powell. Jerome Powell is the Federal Reserve, uh, head of the Federal Reserve. Here's what he's saying, and I, I agree with him. He's basically saying the supply chain issue is finally, just finally getting back in track. You can see it right through here. Supply chain is starting to normalize. The supply side of various parts in the economy are now getting closer to where we were pre-pandemic. So what we had is we had a lot of people with a lot of money, and I'm going to show you that right here because I get a lot of grief from people on this saying, Dan, people that, you know, people weren't rich during the pandemic. Well, they're richer than any other time in history. Here is the disposable income chart, and this is issued by the Federal Reserve. Okay, this is the Federal Reserve. They issue this. This is how much disposable income you and I have throughout history. If you go back all the way back to, <coughs> excuse me, 2020, uh, 2014, Here's how much disposable income we have in the bank. How much extra money you and I have as consumers. Look at this. We save over time. We want a better life for us and our families. So we save and we save. And then all of a sudden we get over to here. And what happened right here? March of 2020, this spiked to levels we've never seen before. And then additionally, in 2021, it spiked to the highest levels ever in history. What this means is people had more money than they ever have in their bank accounts. Okay. What happened? All of a sudden, all that money was sucked out. Well, what happened during this, this time frame right here? Well, what happened was we had COVID and we had COVID. Everybody was shut in. Um, if you had a mortgage, you probably didn't have to make a mortgage for payment for about a year and a half. If you had a student loan, you didn't have to make a student loan payment. You weren't traveling. You weren't going out to dinner. You had stimulus checks. People had all this money and they were putting it into the bank. And then they started spending and spending and spending. As you can see, the chart just crashed over there. Okay. But you also, on top of it, we had a supply chain issue that even Federal Reserve Chairman Powell says. So you have limited amount of goods, okay, with a bunch of money chasing that those goods. What happens when that, what happens when you have too much of something uh, or, or too much money in the limited supply, it drives up the prices, okay? Kind of conversely, what happened with the housing crash that everybody keeps talking about in 2008? 
We had millions of homes on the market because people couldn't afford those homes because they had subprime mortgages. Everybody you know, that was in those, those, those situations basically either walked away from their house or just said, I got to sell my house for whatever I can get for it. So it caused oversupply with less demand. So that caused the house prices to crash. What we saw during COVID is we saw people had tons of money right through here again. We had a, a supply chain issue. So we had a ton of money chasing limited supplies. What happens? Prices go out the roof. Okay. So what's happening up to this point is a lot of manufacturers, a lot of companies are saying we can continue to push up prices aka inflation, because people are just accustomed to it right now. Well, the good news that we've had over the last couple of weeks, especially this week, is we had right through here where producer prices are basically flat right now. They're completely flat. So if prices aren't going up on the producer side, kind of like they were, we're hoping that the producers or the manufacturers are going to now stop raising prices for us basically curing inflation. So that's kind of what's going on right now, folks. So that's basically explaining to you how I'm predicting or forecasting a five and a half percent rate and the whys behind it. And then why supply chain issues and everything else have really caused a conundrum uh, for the Federal Reserve. So yesterday, the Federal Reserve came out and they said, we're not going to increase rates, but we anticipate three rate cuts in 2024. Well, the markets are actually anticipating more than that, but I'll take the three, the, the, the three rate cuts. It beats 11 uh, rate increases that they've done over the last two years. So that's that part of it. So let's get over to the economic news we have for today, and it is right here. And I just kind of went over that. We had retail sales up a little bit hotter than expected. Initial jobless claims weren't as good as expected, and retail sales took an uptick. And I'm, I, I might blame this on the holiday season. So let's get over based on this news. What's the bond markets doing? Because what I follow on this channel is what I was stating at the beginning. We watched the ten-year Treasury, but you can't really keep. You know, use that anymore, that logic anymore, because the disconnect I just showed you. If you watch the 10-year treasury in the past, you're like, okay, the, the yield's 3.9, I'll add 1.5 to that, that's where my rate should be. Well, it doesn't work anymore until everything comes back and normalizes. Okay, so to really focus in on where mortgage rates are, I focus in on the MBS market. Why? Because this is the mortgage bond that trades on Wall Street. That, that actually, the, the yield on this thing is the biggest part of your mortgage rate. So we follow this. All you need to know is right here, the price of the bond and what it's doing. Any bond, here's how it works. If the price of the bond's going up, and if you squint, I got a green screen, but if you squint, the price right now is up 14 ticks. Okay, all you need to know is this. If the price of a bond, any bond goes up, its yield or its interest rate goes down. Okay, so right here, a 14 tick up means mortgage rates are gonna come down. They'll probably come down about 0 0.03, 0 0.04 from where we are now. Let's get over to where we are now. We're at 6.82. So we might be at, you know, maybe by the end of the week, we might be at 6.75 a far cry from where we were maybe 60 days ago at 8%. So that's basically what's going on in the markets right now. So I got something for you. If you're locked in already and you, I would suggest you call your mortgage lender. If you haven't closed or you're not closing within 30 days and say, what can I do? I'm locked in. My rate's seven and a half percent. My rate's 8%. What can I do? Most of the time, and I'll, I'll prep you, if they tell you they can't really do anything, I got might have a solution for you. Go to therateupdate.com. So let me explain what I am and what we do. So my name is Dan Friel. I'm a mortgage advisor licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. And I'm set up with, uh, I work with Allied First Bank, so we're a federal, federal bank, we're, so that gives me my federal charter or federal license, but we're also one of the country's largest mortgage brokerages. So I'm set up with over 60 different lenders that I can use their programs and their rates their rates. Okay, so what we could do is if, if you're locked in or you want to see what we can do for you, I have a loan estimate tab right here. And we just created that not too long ago. It's for you guys out there that are locked in, that your mortgage lender is saying, there's nothing I can do. You're locked in. I want you to upload your loan estimate right into there. Okay, it's in, the, in a part of your mortgage package that they sent you when they initially sent it out to you. What we're going to do is we're going to take your criteria, we're going to analyze it with over 60 other lenders, as well as my bank, to see, can we get you a lower rate? Can we get you lower fees? Can we get you a lower rate and lower fees. Okay. That's the first step I want you guys to do. But if you're out there and you're like, Dan, now rates are coming down and 
maybe housing in my area for me now that puts me in a payment that I can be a little bit comfortable for uh, with with a house in the price range that I can afford. So if that's you and you're just like, hey, can I qualify, you know, based on my income, maybe based on my credit and the, the m- amount of money I have in my accounts, well, let's find out. Don't disqualify yourself. All we ask you to do is reach out to us. How do you do that? Well, one, you can hit the apply now button. We're going to ask you a series of questions. Based on those answers, we're going to set you up with a mortgage advisor on my team that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. But if you're new to this and you're like, I, you know, I don't really even know, you know, what's what can I call? Can I email you? Absolutely. So you're going to go to the rateupdate.com. You're going to scroll down. You're going to see all kinds of blogs and mortgage calculators and different programs so you can understand what kind of programs are out there. But when you go down to the bottom, you're going to see two things right here. One is our 800 number. It's right there. And two is my email address. If you want to email me directly, go ahead. And I will be the one, I promise you, I will be the one answering your emails. And my email is dan at the rateupdate.com. So thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining us on yesterday's live event. I'm sorry my my channel didn't stream it. We had some issues there, but it, with Kyle on the Win the House You Love, it was there. So check that out. And if you're not a subscriber of mine yet and you'd like to be, please hit the subscribe button right there. And also, we have a newsletter. Kyle Seagraves and myself created a newsletter. If you want to check that out, you can subscribe to that down below in the description. It's free, and we hope you like what you see. And if you don't, please give us some feedback on what you'd like included in those newsletters, and we'd like to you know, accommodate you guys if we get a consensus vote. So thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless. Hope to see you here tomorrow with some more, hopefully, good news. Take care. Bye-bye.